Mom and Dad, congratulations on your new baby. There is no greater joy than that of having a child. Your life is changing and there will definitely be some bumps in the road along the way. One of the most important things right now is to take care of mom. It's hard work giving birth and takes some time to recover. It's helpful to have a partner, friend, or family member to help with the transition of bringing baby home. To help new parents cope with the challenges and ensure that the important developmental years are as smooth as possible, the military has developed a New Parent Support Program, or NPSP. This program helps parents and parents-to-be develop the skills they need to provide a nurturing environment for their children. The home visitors from the NPSP are registered nurses and social workers. They have experience with military families and they make free visits on and off post. New moms can sometimes feel sad or depressed. Postpartum depression, or PPD, is not some made-up disorder. It's a real illness and can affect any new mom. It happens when your body and your hormones react to your recent birth. Some signs you are suffering from PPD are feeling grumpy or worried, feeling extremely tired and unable to sleep, feeling badly about yourself or guilty, being very sad and crying a lot, losing interest in your life or your baby, or feeling like you want to hurt yourself or your child. If you notice any of these symptoms or any unusual behavior, talk to your doctor or visit a health clinic right away. And if any of you dads or loved ones notice these symptoms in a new mom, suggest she see her doctor right away. Sometimes you may need the help of additional services offered through the military healthcare system, your installation, or the local community. NPSP professionals can help you find and take advantage of those services that suit your needs best. Treatments can range from seeing a counselor to talking to a new mom support group, or even possibly taking medication to help ease your depression. A wonderful support group in your area is the Postpartum Empowerment Group. They meet weekly at the Family Member Behavioral Health Center Conference Room. To register, please call 910-907-7869. Simple steps you can take at home to combat PPD include eating healthy, staying active but don't overdo it, getting more rest, and talking about your feelings with your loved ones. Early treatment can help you quickly conquer PPD, so don't wait. To learn more about PPD, visit with your doctor or go to the National Women's Health Information Center at womenshealth.gov. Now that mom is recovering well, let's focus on your new bundle of joy. Healthy babies often cry a lot during the first five months of their lives. As a new parent, crying can be difficult to handle, but just to let you know, it does get easier. The period of purple crying information you receive from the hospital will really help you understand this. Here are some tips. First, check to see if your baby is hungry, tired, or needs changing. Walking, rocking, and singing to your baby can also help. So can giving your baby a warm bath or going for a walk or ride in the car. You can also distract your baby with a rattle or toy. Recording a sound to play for the baby, like a vacuum or hairdryer, can also do the trick. Try burping your baby or simply holding your baby close with skin-to-skin -skin contact and remember to take calming deep breaths. These ideas may not work every time, but they can reduce baby's crying about half the time. And you can always check with your doctor to see if there is something wrong that's causing the crying. Here are some important action steps to take if the crying gets too frustrating for you to handle. Carry, comfort, walk, and talk with your baby. It is also okay to walk away for a bit. Put your baby in a safe place and take a few minutes to calm yourself. Take a deep breath and count to 10. Then go back and check on your baby. And ask for help. Call a trusted friend or relative to take over for a while so you can get a break or call Military One Source 24 seven. It's never okay to shake or hurt your baby. Shaken baby syndrome is very dangerous. It can cause blindness, seizures, learning disabilities, physical disabilities, or even death. To find out more information, contact your doctor, visit DontShake.org, or ask your home visitor. The NPSP also provides classes to help give parents an understanding of their infant's world, along with the safety information to keep their baby safe and sound. All classes are free of charge, and you can register at the Army Community Service. Another serious threat to your infant is SIDS. 
SIDS stands for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. Its cause is unknown, but there are many ways to reduce the risk of it happening to your baby. Sleeping safely in an approved crib dramatically reduces the risk of SIDS. Here are a few more tips. Always place babies on their back to sleep. Place your baby in a crib on a firm sleep surface, such as a safety approved crib mattress covered by a fitted sheet. Keep objects such as pillows, blankets, and toys out of the crib to prevent suffocation. Do not smoke around your baby. It is dangerous to co-sleep with your baby, and that includes in a bed, on the couch, or in a chair. The safest place for your baby to sleep is in your room, but not in your bed. Do not overdress your baby. So dress your baby comfortably based on the temperature. If your baby uses a pacifier, offer it before putting the baby down to sleep. To avoid flat spots on the back of your baby's head, provide plenty of tummy time while your baby is awake and someone is watching. Never leave your baby alone or unsupervised on their tummy because it is dangerous if they fall asleep or get their airways covered. For more information on SIDS or questions about crib safety, contact your local pediatrician or visit nichd.nih.gov backslash SIDS. Every new mom wants to make the best decisions possible for their new miracle. Nutrition choices can be tough. How you feed your baby is one of the first key decisions you'll make for your child. Breast or bottle, it can be a tough choice for some moms. While medical experts recommend breastfeeding as the best option for newborns, it may not be possible or preferable for all women. Deciding which choice is best for your baby is usually based on mom's comfort level, lifestyle, or emotional needs. Breastfeeding does have many advantages though. One of the most important is breast milk is the perfect food for a baby's digestive system. It contains vitamins and minerals, as well as antibodies that a newborn requires. Some formulas do come close to imitating breast milk, but the exact same composition cannot be duplicated. Breastfeeding is not only good for your baby, but is also great for us moms too. It burns calories and helps shrink your uterus so you can get back in shape quicker. Breastfeeding may also protect mom from breast and ovarian cancers. With all of these wonderful things that go along with breastfeeding, there are some women who do prefer formula. Breastfeeding can prove difficult for some moms. There are lactation counselors at WAMC that can help you if you are having a hard time. They are located on the third floor of WAMC. There is one more key benefit to breastfeeding. You can't beat the price. Breastfeeding is absolutely free, aside from the cost of a pump and a few other accessories. If you have any questions or concerns about your baby's nutrition, formula, or breastfeeding, contact your local pediatrician or a lactation consultant. When you're ready to take your baby home for the first time, you'll need to know some car safety tips. In order to leave the hospital safely, you will need to have a rear-facing car seat already installed. There are a lot of car seat options, including infant carriers, convertible car seats, and boosters for older children. Your local fire department can even help you properly install it. Use a rear-facing car seat until the child is at least two years old, or until they reach the upper weight or height limit safely allowed by the car seat manufacturer. Most rear-facing car seats are made for children up to 30 or 35 pounds. Don't ever put a rear-facing car seat in the front seat or in front of an airbag. After your baby outgrows the rear-facing car seat, a forward-facing car seat with harnesses is recommended until they outgrow that particular seat. That's usually around 90 pounds depending on the model, but check the label to be sure. Once children outgrow the forward-facing seat, a booster should be used in combination with a seat belt. Anytime a child is in a car seat, make sure they are within age, weight, and height limits for that car seat. Ensure the harness straps are in the right set of slots, the chest clip is at armpit level, the car seat is securely attached to the car and doesn't move more than one inch when you pull on it, and that the car seat is installed correctly based on the manufacturer's instructions. You and your child should always wear seat belts. It's the law and the best way to keep your family safe. Remember, don't ever leave a child unattended in a car. For more information on car seat safety, visit www.safercar.gov backslash parents or call your local or on post fire station.
Prior to baby's arrival, you should think safety. There are a lot of hidden dangers in your house that can cause serious injury to your child. Remember to always follow all guidelines when it comes to crib safety and never shake your baby. You can protect against unexpected falls by always staying within reach when your baby is in a raised place, such as a changing table, and always use the safety strap to keep your baby safe. Use pacifiers safely, never attach a string or ribbon, and wash them often. Always discard any pacifiers that seem damaged. To protect your baby from burns, never smoke or hold hot liquids while holding your baby. That is just a disaster waiting to happen. Once your baby has graduated to tub baths, always test the water temperature. It should feel warm, but not hot. Using the back of your hand as an indicator can help, and never ever leave a baby unattended in a bath, not even for a second. Another safety hazard you may not have thought of can be your pet. So if you have a pet, make sure to introduce the pet at the right time, creating a safe environment for the baby first and then focusing on your pet. Never leave the baby and your pet alone together. As your child grows and becomes more mobile, your home safety needs will change dramatically. You'll need to keep all potential hazards away from their little hands. This includes cleaning products, electrical outlets, and make sure to gate stairs in order to prevent falls. NPSP can provide families with free safety kits for making your home safer. Taking a prenatal class such as Baby Basic Training at ACS, you can learn the basics needed for your baby. Classes include information and education about prepping for baby, budgeting for baby, safety skills and setting routines. ACS also offers a quick course for dads including developing skills on diapering, burping and swaddling babies, and an understanding dads class for moms-to-be or new moms. And finally, taking an infant CPR course is always helpful and can save your baby's life. In the event of an emergency, it could mean the difference between life and death. If you're ever in a real emergency, get medical help immediately. For information on local courses or any other safety information, contact NPSP or visit the Army Community Service at fortbraggmwr.com backslash ACS. When the time is right, you may need to find childcare for your baby. Choosing the right childcare is one of the most important decisions your family will ever make. You want your child to have the best care possible, so it is important to make sure your childcare provider's style fits your needs. Here are a few steps to follow when choosing high quality childcare. Start early. Active duty can get on the on-post daycare list after your first OB visit. No matter what type of care you are looking for, you need plenty of time to weigh all the options so you can make an informed decision. Make calls, call CYSS on post or Partnership for Children in Fayetteville. Then call and visit recommended daycare facilities and ask about their licensing, cost, and staff turnover. Make a visit. See what adult to child ratios the daycare has on a normal day. If you plan to hire a nanny, ask them to come interact with your child while you're around so you can see if it is a good fit. Make sure to ask plenty of questions, especially about their qualifications, and always ask for and check references. Is the nanny's developmental plan learning-based, bright and cheery, flexible and responsive? Make a choice. Use a checklist to see what options best fit your lifestyle, budget, and your child's needs. The NPSP home visitors can provide a checklist of this information to you at a home visit. And finally, stay involved. Try to volunteer if you have time. Set up regular meetings to determine if something can be done better or try to participate in any special days or field trips your caregiver sets up. That shows your child and your caregiver that you think they are doing a good job. There are lots of resources to use to find the childcare that is right for you. Your local Army Community Service can help guide you in the right direction. Now that you know how and where to go, you are ready to be the best parents you can be. And remember, you don't have to be a new parent to participate in the program. Military families that are pregnant or have children 0 to 36 months are eligible for NPSP services. Call NPSP or check the website for more information about home visits or to get the latest schedules for playgroups and classes. You can even register for classes online. Congratulations and enjoy your new bundle of joy. These are the memories that you will cherish forever.